hello hello today we're gonna be playing hooked on you again last time we went after wraith and this time we're going after who you guys have all been waiting for and that is the they herself the queen our ultimate waifu spirit all right we're gonna start up a new game we're going with my same name okay we're basic fishes let's go you wake up on the beach, soaking wet, salt water stinging the inside of your throat as if you'd nearly drowned. Water falls from your mouth as you open it up to gasp for air. You have no memory of how you got here. In fact, you can only remember your own name, but not where you came from or a single fact about your life. You look down at your feet, ankle deep in the crystal blue water of a newly arrived wave. As the water recedes back into the ocean, it reveals a grotesque discovery. <laughs> a decomposing face stares up at you from, the be from beneath the sand. All you can do is vomit. A stream of dark bile, bugs, worms, and other... <sighs> Questions race through your mind. Where are you? How did you get here? Who is behind this incredibly charming and well-spoken voice in your head? However, answers don't come easy. Your mind is completely blank. All right, so we're gonna close our eyes. You close your eyes. This must be a nightmare, right? This is not happening. This is not happening. The mantra centers you and you're briefly able to find peace. The lapping waves go silent and for a t first time in your entire life, it feels like you're in control. Oh, oh sorry, I skipped something. I, I skipped something, I'm sorry. You're in the exact same place, except now that disgusting corpse face is, is smiling at you. Your mind doesn't have a chance to linger any longer on your current situation as you feel something soft bump into your foot. Wait, did we take the coin then? Or like, what? When you look down, you find a volleyball sitting in the sand there next to you. You stare down, frozen. A voice calls out from behind you. A little help, please. You turn around and when you see what's waiting for you, your jaw just about hits the ground. Wife the number one. Then we got Wraith. Our bae herself, the queen, the spirit, and the trapper. Four gorgeous monsters stand halfway between you and a well-tended volleyball court. Your heart begins to race, curiosity, fear, desire. You can't help but stare at these casually dressed, well, let's call them killers. I don't know, not to be judgmental, but that's just the energy they put out there. There are weird days, and then there's this. All you can do is look down at the ball and back up at this monstrous lineup of, well, literal monsters. Sexy-ass monsters, though. What do you do? We're gonna toss it back. You bend down and grab the ball. It's warm from sitting in the sand on this beautiful day. When you give the ball a toss, it arcs beautifully through the air and lands right in Huntress's hands. Not bad, stranger. Try hard much? but. <laughs> They're speaking directly to you, but you still can't bring yourself to reply. You're entranced. When you snap out of it, you realize that everyone has gone back to the volleyball court. With no good reason not to, you decided to head over and see what happens next. Here we go! It seems like you've derailed the volleyball game just by showing up. You derailed the game just by showing up, nitwit! Hey, don't worry about it. It's all just a game. Existence, that is. Besides, you seem to say. Besides, you seem a lot more interesting than a silly game. What's your deal? What brings you here? Hey, Effie, you might want to, you know, say something. Actually, never mind. There will be plenty of time for that soon enough. Right now, this group has some questions for you. I'm ready for the questions. I want to channel spirit. All right, we're going for spirit. Spirit. Okay. How attractive would you say you are? We're gonna, we're, ah, ah, she's not coffee. We're going average again. Pretty average, I think. Just another, fuck, I thought that was one that she liked. Shit. Shit. Just another face in the crowd. Another normal, meaningless life in an endless cycle. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? We're gonna go flight. I feel like that's good. Flight for sure. Yay! Let's go! It was the right one! Technically, I suppose I can fly. 
Honestly, it's not all that it's cracked up to be. As far as I go, I'm still not where I want to be. She's happy. She's happy. Best subject in school? Hmm. I feel like spirit and history, maybe? History? <gasps> Bro, we're on a roll! Let's go! <clears throat> nice. It's important to know what came before us so that we are not doomed to repeat humanity's mistakes. I mean, we will anyways, but still. What's your favorite animal? Mm. Guys, I feel like... I kind of feel like a cat is spirit, but what's a mustel... Must... Mustelid? 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 Mustelid. It's 100%. Be honest, you have no idea what a muslid is, and you're just hoping it's some secret answer that results in a hilarious Easter egg, right? Because there is no Easter egg, it's just another word for ferrets and stuff like that. What's your favorite color? I think blue, because spirit's very blue dabu dee dabu die. We're doing it. Blue. Blue isn't good for productivity, it makes people want to be lazy. Dream job. Okay, so I think this was good last time. If we get to do whatever we really want, why work at all? It takes a lot of courage to break free from society's expectations to climb the ladder. Best flavor of ice cream? So Wraith liked vanilla and chocolate. Maybe spirit? Okay, chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. My favorite flavor is Bane! Same. Same here. Mine is vanilla, swirled with pain. I think mint chip is the greatest flavor ever conceived myself. But enough about ice cream, am I right? Anywho, now that they know so much about you, I'm sure the group wants you to start getting to know them. I'm Trapper! I pretty much run things around here. I'm the smartest, richest, strongest person on this whole island. Hi, I'm Wraith. I'm nothing like everyone else. Queen. Hey, what's up? I'm Spirit. I don't like most things. I don't really hate most things either. It's not worth my time. But the things I do hate, I really hate. You know? Hey, I'm the hunch- I don't know her voice, I'm sorry, I lost it. I never found it last time and it's just a mess, okay? Hey, I'm Huntress. Don't let these bummers get you down. There's lots of fun to be had on this island, along with lots of love. If we're done playing, let's do something else instead. We're coming up on our first date, boys! Wow, for once, I actually agree with the meathead. Where do you want to go? We're gonna go hang out with the queen. Be great to relax for a second at the lounge. Eee! I'm sorry, it begins. To kick up your feet, look out over the ocean, and relax on your own terms. Who would want anything else? Dry, comfortable, enjoying a cool drink on a hot day. It's the best. Hold on, just for a moment. This is Dwight and Claudette, our activities coordinators. Love you, Claude. There are also the cooks, waiters, bartenders, janitors, and every other job. We will now escort the group to the venue of your choosing. So what'll it be? Of course we're gonna stick with our choice. We're going with spirit, baby. Finally, freedom from the Finally, freedom from the preposterous premise that the four of us would be engaged in some sort of thrilling two-on-two -two volleyball match. I don't know whose idea volleyball was in the first place, but I hate them. I tried to feign a sprained ankle, but everyone already knows that I technically float above the ground, so nobody believed I was even putting any pressure on my joints in the first place. So, thanks I guess you we're getting it called off. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So what will you be having? Ooh! Okay, guys, remember, this is important. We have to choose the right drink for spirit. She might be a vodka soda. 
Ooh, okay. Shit. I don't think she's scratch on the rocks. Who would the daiquiri be for then? Okay. Mm. All right, we're gonna go with sangria. This is something fruity, but refreshing. Hold the coconut rum. A sangria, maybe? <laughs> My pleasure. <clears throat> no! I knew it wasn't that drink. Oh! I really feel like it was vodka soda. Oof. That sounds nice. We used to make drinks like that back home. Well, not we exactly. I watched someone drink a drink like that once. They looked happy. Now's your chance to be the one with the drink. What do you say? This is some sort of juice for a child. Are there children hiding about? No, it's for adults. The kind who like, you know, tropical fun. Oh, I see. Not my cup of tea, but okay, sure. We can still use it for a toast, yeah? To new adventures. To new friends. To, uh... Clink. Did you just say clink? Dude, right so cringe. If we must make small talk, I'm at least picking a topic before we end up being forced to do some lame improv game that nerds learn at some non-sports after-school activities that I definitely never did because I'm no nerd. Sitting here on this beautiful sunny afternoon, warm sand beneath the cool fog, beneath my severed feet, the topic I choose is books. Novels, comics, fiction, or none, reading is the only real escape from the inescapable horror of life. The escape into your own mind. She's so perfect, dude. Considering the situation we're in, it seems an appropriate time to ask you. Heavy, what's your desert island book? The one book you'd bring with you if you were, well, on an island like this. Oh, and it has to be classic horror, for reasons that should be obvious. Nothing too modern. Humanity has really gotten sought these past hundred years. So what's your favorite? Okay, Dracula? Frankenstein for a monster. I feel like that's Ray. Dr. Jekyll and Miss, Mr. Hyde, probably Trapper. And Books, probably... Books, no thanks, probably Huntress. That's what I'm going with. I'm trusting my gut. Dracula is one classic that's still scary. To be seduced by some beautiful stranger, only to learn later on that they're an immortal villain. It's downright thrilling. <laughs> Yeah, baby! Let's go! <laughs> Just gotta think like the goth GF. Well, I guess, but I was gonna say that despite the deviant behavior of Dracula and the threat of possible danger or even death that he poses, you can't help but get turned on by the liberation from the status quo that he represents. Same here. So what if some old doctor says he's a bad boy? <laughs> You're supposed to reek like garlic and sleep alone? Who do they think would buy into that? If you're gonna be trapped in the nightmare that is undead life eternal, which I know a little something about, you could do a lot worse than great clothes, a castle, and a lover who doesn't take shit from anyone. The scariest part of Dracula is thinking that no one will ever be quite as interesting to make love to you as a vampire. Damn, she, I mean, she knows what she likes. Enough about these old stories that belong to someone else. I think it's time to make some new stories of our own. Why do you look so distressed, Huntress? Are you okay? Before you know what's going on, Huntress is waving an empty vodka bottle in the air, a devilish twinkle in her half mask covered eye. <gasps> The vodka was her drink. Oh, okay. Might I suggest something a little naughty? Let's all get in a circle and spin this bad boy. Great idea. Trickster? Isn't it a bit late to introduce a new character? I thought I was the one who gets to make the rules, so... I'm not sure who I'm asking. But I wasn't ready for this. Well, hello, and who's this new fan in the waiting? Beat it, hack! 
Oh, I can't stay. I was just saying it's a great idea while also teasing the secret trickster ending. What? Wait, there's a trickster ending? No way. I've got much, much better things to do than hang out here. I'm famous. Absolutely. The rules are simple. First you spin, then you swap. Spit, that is. Ew, it's so gross. But let's be clear, this ain't a peep show. We're here to have a good time, but in a classy way. All makeouts will happen out of view of the public eye. Real romantic like. Epi, you're up. You grip the bottle in your hand and put your feet in the hands of the empty bottle gods. Alright, we're starting the mini games, guys. Let's go. We gotta. We gotta. We're so close. Psych, you have to actually spin multiple times to get your real result. Thank God. First to get to three times is your true match. That's how we play hardcore spin the bottle. <sighs> you spin on, okay, okay. Fuck! Ah! Ah! Okay, 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 okay. Is it? Oh! We got spirit, guys. Let's go. Spirit is your true match. Ooh. Just this morning, we were waking up on a strange beach surrounded by strangers with murderous intent. Now you're looking across a beach towel at Spirit, lust in her eyes, sweat glistening on her skin. Your heart races. You can feel your pulse pounding in your ears. So, oh, God. <laughs> Spirit takes you by the hand, and you sit face to face at a private section of the bar. She begins to reach for you, putting her hands on your shoulders. You're sweating, but not in the sexy way she is. You're sweating in the gross way. You'd sweat at the interview for a job you're not even remotely qualified for. You don't know what to do. If you try to lock lips in this state, you might gross her out so completely that she'll never be able to look at you romantically again. Spirit, I... you... We... I have some bad news for you. I have something in my teeth, don't I? I think it might be seaweed. I have no idea how long I was in that ocean. No. Well, maybe. But that's not what I was gonna say. This... It's not happening. Not now. Maybe not ever. If they think I'm going to make out with some stranger just because the bottle told me to... They've got another thing coming, and so do you. Namely, a katana into your heart if you even try to make a move under such absurd circumstances. Damn, we've been told. Sheesh. I wasn't gonna. Yeah, I know, you seem pretty harmless and not at all that bad to kiss if I were interested, which I'm not at this moment in time. Shattered, bro. Shattered. Are we gonna tell them we kissed? We are. I'm not above lying to get what I want. So, that thing about me being not that bad to kiss... Was that a lie? To get me to play along? If you want to know the truth, figure it out for yourself. But don't expect this life to just hand you gifts like me. All I was ever handed was pain and suffering. Treat me well, and I'll return the favor. She's cute. Is she blushing? Oh my god. Otherwise, try a different route and see what happens. I hate to break up such a passionate moment that we only assume was passionate because we never spy on you constantly while you stay on this island. But dinner is being served right away, and we must insist that you join us. We wouldn't want anyone dying of starvation when there are so many more interesting things to die from. You arrive at the cookout area to find an assortment of picnic tables scattered around. Dwight and Claudette are directing traffic. You sit on one side, the rest of them will sit opposite you. Huntress and Trapper can sit at the ends with their enormous sexy arms. Now that everyone is seated, we can begin dinner. Tonight's meal was prepared slowly and carefully with both love and hate for 12 hours over a spit. 
We hope you all enjoy. We really, really hope you do. Hey, you didn't actually tell us what you're serving. What are we eating? It's meat. Seasoned with a specific number of special herbs and spices that we simply can't divulge. Oh my god, I just had a thought. Do you think there's a secret end to get Dwight and Claude? What if there really is a secret tri trickster end? And there really is a secret... Like, what if you can woo everyone? Hmm? When you look closely at the spate, you spot what definitely appears to be scraps of fabric sandwiched between some layers of meat. I think I might be sick. Is there anything else to eat? This took 12 hours. And we do literally everything on this island. Actually, there's one thing you're not doing today. You're not carving up this delectable meal. Uh, hey, why don't you just let me carve up dinner? Splendid idea. We'd hate for it to get cold. He hated when it got cold. There's a machete freshly sharpened. All right. Let's nail this shit. Let's go. Oh, wait, there's one. And it's up. 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 The last time we did this, we, we got spirit, and this time we didn't, we got Trapper. Shit, flawless. That was possibly the sexiest thing I've ever seen that didn't involve a dismemberment. Maybe we should skip dinner. Settle down. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. And remember, Effie, don't show all your cards just yet. You don't want them to expect anything. But last time, we were... Ah. I thought if I got it perfect, that spirit would be happy. Dinner is finally served. For real. Spirit, why aren't you hungry? The two best things about being dead is not having to eat. That's only one thing think about it, Effie. Number two is no number two. One less thing to think about in the afterlife. Even if I wanted to eat, I have no idea what would actually follow. You might have noticed, but I'm mostly just a bunch of dismembered body parts floating in a spectral form. Do you see how deep this cut on my abdomen is? I don't think my digestive tract connects anymore. Between the food and the behavior of the group, this might be the worst meal in history. But even worse is they're staring at you. You're not eating. They don't like that. I think they want an explanation why. What do you want to tell them? I'm gonna own it and just say it's gross. Everything about this dinner is an abomination from what is the most certain from what is almost certainly human meat, to the lack of manners, to the talk of dismembered parts, and these noises, everything is so vile, I might throw up. Even Spirit is talking about number two. Don't call him Spirit! No! Why are you doing this so wrong? Oh god. Oh god, look at her face. Oh no. I thought she was the classy one. Oh god. Oh, well then, I didn't realize our eBay habits gross you out. I fucked up so bad. <laughs> Don't be so judgmental. Sheesh. If I could feel shame or sadness, I might be experiencing both right now. But what I can feel is rage, and I am furious. You just ruined the meal. I have a whole leg to eat. I think I might die here. Imagine I get endgame right here. Uh, game over, I mean. Even though you're in the hot seat now, you're not nearly as panicked as you probably should be. That's almost certainly the lack of calories catching up to you. And you feel your whole body begin to shut itself down. Just give me a spirit, please. You wake to find... Yes! Okay, here we go. We're cooking. You wake up to find spirit holding your limp body and gingerly pouring cold water into your mouth. Don't you just love the ocean at night? I do. <laughs> Staring out over at the vast darkness, the ocean really validates the feelings inside me that we're all truly insignificant 
And the only thing worth pursuing is revenge. I have to wonder, how could anyone believe anything else? I love her. You look out into the darkness of night and ponder her question. Oh, well, it's a simple question. How could they? How could anyone not feel small and alone in the face of such massive nothingness? If I do, you found someone special, do you think it'll, like, gear it towards her? I used to feel that way. Small, important, alone. But lately, I'm not so sure. I started to feel different. I started to actually think that maybe this island is where I might meet someone special. You look at Spirit, who has turned from the ocean to look at you while you speak on this topic she's clearly so passionate about. A friend? Perhaps something more? I don't know what this island has planned for me. Uh, a friend? Friends are just cowards who seek comfort in numbers. Damn, that's kinda harsh, bro. I had friends once. Back before, I was chopped into a bunch of pieces by my father. Friends aren't what... Ke Friends aren't what's keeping me held together. I'm floating in a cloud of rage. Ugh, I was so dumb. So busy trying to please everybody and be the perfect student. The perfect employee. The perfect daughter. I didn't get it. Blah, blah, blah. I didn't take care of myself, and now I'm all I've got. Worst of all, I got distracted from my true purpose, my destiny, the purpose that was sitting inside me the whole time. My whole life. Okay, so this might sound a bit silly, but... Spirit looks around to see if there's anyone else on the beach. When she's, con when she's convinced that it's only you two, she continues. There's a dragon that lives inside of me. I've always known, but I've tried to ignore it. When I couldn't ignore it, it tr I tried to push it down. I'm so stupid. You're not stupid, that sounds badass. Right? But I didn't let it out. And then I, you know, chop chop. And now that dragon is pretty much a one-track revenge beast. But enough about me. What's inside of you, stranger? Oh, you? Hmm, nothing but darkness, no dragon, just a lot of fire. I feel like I could be edgy, nothing but darkness. Or we go with passion, like I got a lot of passion. And dragons and fire kind of go together. Edgy could be a play, but also that could be boring. We're gonna choose nothing but darkness, we're edgelord. A kill to have a dragon. Maybe not the best choice of words. I mean, a dragon sounds awesome. Honestly though, I don't feel like I've got anything inside me at all. Just darkness, never ending darkness. And here I thought Spirit was the biggest goth on the island until you arrived. Perhaps I could light a torch and search through that darkness. She's so cute with her little sparkles. Oh God. Gustus things are really heating up. You hear a flurry of footsteps behind you and you quickly spin around, ready to fend off whatever new danger has popped up on the strange island. Only to find that it's Dwight and Claudette sprinting across the beach, clipboards in hand, which they're waving the air above their heads. It's very important that we stick to the itinerary and attend, and attend each event as scheduled. Playing sick for cute flirt points was not part of this evening's activities. That's strictly in for after campfire story time. At this rate, we'll be late. Go, 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 go! Everyone, oh no, once everyone has gathered at the fire pit, Dwight and Claudette quickly make an announcement. We're not gonna blame anyone in particular, but someone, and we're not gonna say who, so don't worry, you hasn't been sticking to the schedule. That means we're behind on time for evening activities, and we'll only have time for one person to share their special spooky nighttime story. Effie, who do you think should go? Oh, damn it, that's a name. Please pick somebody quickly so that this tropical vacation doesn't turn into a bloodbath. You know we going with our girl. Really? You want to hear from me? Spirit huffs and dramatically rolls her eyes and she gets to her feet in front of the campfire. 
Don't let her talk you out of it. She's great with ghost stories. I don't know where she gets it, but she comes up with scary stuff. Seriously disturbing. Even to me. And I literally pulled a guy's skull and spine out once with my bare hands. Oh, so we just tell him the story so easy now? Damn. This shit had all the detail last time. Talk about bullshit stories. If everyone else is going to chit chat, I guess I can just sit down and... Huntress's eyes go red behind her mask and both Trapper and Rick take their seat. They know when it's worth fighting and when it's not. Ahem. Well, I hate to break it to you, but tonight's story isn't scary. It's a romance. Too late now though, I was selected and so I'm going to tell my story. I call it... The prisoner's kiss. Look how cute she is. You notice that Huntress and you notice that Huntress and Wraith are both sharing a giant tub of popcorn. Where the fuck did they get that from? Nobody offered you popcorn. It was a dark summer night. Warm rain seeped from the sky like blood from an old wound. Detective Hata, a celebrated investigator and renowned hostage negotiator, was called to the scene of a strange occurrence, unlike anything she had ever seen before. When she arrived, the scene was chaotic. Crowds had begun to gather. A dozen other officers were doing everything they could to keep curious onlookers away. But how could anyone resist wanting to know more? For there, in the middle of a busy market, had appeared a giant box. Strange, alien in its appearance, and massive in size. No one knew how it got there. Was it delivered? Built on site? In such a busy area, how could something like that just appear? A mystery. It's as if it conjured by magic. But this was no illusion. The huge box was very real, and someone was trapped inside. Spirit pauses her story to look from face to face of each audience member. She has no expression, but you feel her vibrating with energy. She's in her element. Help me, cried someone inside the box. It was a man, terrified, trapped, imprisoned, imprisoned, his voice trembling. By now, it was as if every detective in the city was there, looking the strange structure up and down, inspecting it on every side. It didn't make sense. There were no doors, no windows, no fasteners or seams. It was completely solid and much too heavy to move by hand. Solid, that is, except for a single small slit, just enough to see the bloodshot eyes of a prisoner trapped inside. I don't know what happened. I woke up and here I was. I'm so scared. Please help me, cried the man as if pleading for his life. No stranger to tense situations, Detective Hada confronted the man. She used her training to calm him and buy time for the other investigators. However, time did not bring clarity, only anxiety as the night dragged on with no progress opening the box. And as the night grew longer, the seeping rain puddling on the ground, the man inside grew more desperate, more sad and lonely, more pathetic and in need of help. But Detective Hota was no help at all. Powerless to save him, guilt began to weigh on her like it never had before. Don't let me die in here, the man begged. Don't let me die alone. Stay calm, instructed Detective Hoda. You're not alone. I'm here. Hell, half the town is here. We're all in this together, and we won't let this be the end of your story. Looking through the narrowest of passageways, Detective Hoda watched her own reflection in the tear-filled eyes of this strange, sad prisoner. Together, they both wept in silence at the helplessness of the moment. Promise? asked the man. Promise? That I'm not alone? Yes, she promised. I do. A simple pledge. She felt an instant connection like she had never felt before. Not to her family, not to her friends, not to any other hostages she had worked so hard to free before. 
And so, when the eyes, when the man's eyes closed and backed away, it didn't scare Detective Hoda, for she knew he would return. And he did, pressing his lips up to the narrow slit of the horrible puzzle box, repeating his question again, steam flowing from his mouth as he asked, Promise? Promise that I'm not alone? Yes, she promised, I do. And pressing her palms against the cold outside of the box, without truly knowing why, Detective Hoda leaned forward and placed her own lips up to the opening, letting her breath creep into his this strange structure, allowing her warm lips to fall on this man's- What is happening? It was a gentle kiss, a moment of compassion. She could feel in the brief contact the beating of her heart. Pulsing blood through every inch of her body, matched beat for beat in the soft touch. Thank you, said the man. No trace of fear remaining in his voice. I fucked that up, sorry. Thank you, said the man. No trace of fear remaining in his voice. And he backed away into the darkness, disappearing in a single moment of eerie calmness. I just realized, should I have the, the stream lights match in this? Get back! yelled an officer, suddenly thrusting himself between Detective Hoda and the box, breaking a silence that would soon be filled with a cacophony ca 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 of wired gears and clinking latches, a symphony of a symphony of mechanical activity happening all at once. Something had triggered, as if an unseen lever pulled, and the side of the gigantic box began to slide open. Detective Hoda gripped her flashlight tightly and pushed forward into the foggy interior of the giant box, her feet splashed in the puddled rainwater, her heart racing as she swept her light from side to side. And that's when her eyes landed on the man, or at least landed on what should have been him. There, in the corner of the box, was a pile of pieces, like parts of doll almost pulled apart or perhaps that's just how detective hoda had to think of him in that moment to survive a collection of segments limbs pieces disconnected from one another cleanly severed and placed in a neat little pile and atop that pile a head cold pale eyes open lips and icy blue Spirit stares at the fire, her own expression lifeless, lifeless, her lips blue, tears fall from her chin and soak into the sand at her feet. You're blown away by the story, and it's safe to say you're not alone. Everyone else is looking into the fire, or up at the sky, anywhere but at Spirit. It was you who chose her, you who initiated this harrowing tale. So sad, so creepy, so sensual. She really went into great detail when it came to describing that kiss. <laughs> Sorry. Too much detail, and now no one is sure to act. Um, oof. I want to hug her. I just want to hug Spirit. Mm, you know? I can't pass up on the opportunity to hug her. I gotta. I gotta. I just gotta hug Spirit. <laughs> you stand and without saying anything approach spirit reaching your arms around her for a hug her robe hovering in the air begins to wrap itself around you and squeeze you into her it's kind of like being hugged back but also like being tied up certainly not what you expected i think that's the best option <laughs> Instinctually, you pull yourself away, but it's an awkward movement and you nearly fall over in the fire. Spirit says nothing and floats away without so much as a goodbye. You, meanwhile, realize everyone had just watched this truly strange interaction from the corners of their eye. <laughs> On that note, everyone decides it's time to take a break and split up for a little bit so they can all have a moment alone before bed. Everyone leaves and you're alone by the fire. The only thing you hear is the ocean slowly lapping against the shore. This is nice. Spirit approaches you. Eee! You know, I was watching you while I told my story. I could tell it was having an effect on you. 
This fog that follows me around. I could feel you breathing heavily, taking me in. You're doing it again, right now. <laughs> you need to calm down. You should come to the hot tub with me. Yes! Let's go! You and your storyteller friends slip into the water. It's just the right temperature for an evening dip. Plus, if some jealous shark comes along and manages to jump from the ocean into the pool, you're also pretty sure your killer companion could handle it. I just want to be totally clear. Even though that story bore some similarities to my life, it was not about me in any way, shape, or form. Not symbolically, not metaphorically, not in any other... Ickly. I believe you completely. Samurai blood runs through my veins. Or, well, maybe it has coagulated by now. No need to sweat the details. Regardless, I am descendant of noble warriors. Thousands of years of training with bladed, with bladed weapons precede my entrance into this world. The truth is, and I wouldn't typically share this, so don't go blabbing about it. I dreamt that story like watching a movie in my sleep when I was just a little girl, years before my father sunk his blade into my skin. I've never been able to shake it. It's a very adult story for children to dream. Do you believe me? Of course. I know we just met, but... Yes, I do believe you. The way you told that story, it clearly came from someplace deep. Whoa. Who taught you to trust a stranger? You're gonna get hurt if you don't learn to take better care of yourself. So she lied. Now you've got me wondering, do I believe you if you believe her or not? Unfortunately, before you can follow this conundrum to what will surely be a mind-numbing cycle of new questions, you find a certain two someone standing before you with a fresh towel ready to dry you off. Sorry kids, but it's time for bed. I might be the youngest one here, but I'm no kid. I do, however, love being wrapped up in a fresh clean towel. My mother used to help me wash my hair when I was young. She'd comb out all the tangles and tie a ribbon around it before sending me on my way. I miss her. You watch as Spirit stares off into the distance, her hand gripping into a tight fist. She doesn't notice you're watching her at first. Mm, queen! When she catches you looking, she turns away, roughly grabs a towel from Dwight, and then pushes him and Claudette aside as she floats off. So cute. You head over to the campfire. The heat is comforting on this chilly night. Looking into the crackling embers, you think about Spirit's story about the prisoner in the puzzle box. If you manage to escape this place, will you leave with your life? Or has it already been taken from you and it's just a matter of time until you make a gruesome discovery? Before you can dwell too much on your fate, Claudette and Dwight arrive. Their now familiar creepy smiles stretching from ear to ear it's a bit menacing to see a smile like that by lit by firelight. We must apologize for the accommodations. We weren't prepared for another guest, but we're going to make you comfortable or die trying. They hand over a pillow and blanket and welcome you to snuggle up by the fire. Perhaps the music will put you at ease. Just try to keep the volume to a minimum. Our other guests aren't the types you'll want to rob of their beauty sleep. As you relax and look into the fire, the radio begins to fuzz and flicker. Is there like an achievement if I listen to all of them? A few moments later. No achievement, but we listen to them all, so. You decide to ask one of the killers to spend a little more time with you until you're sleepier. Obviously, we're gonna be out here. Spirit, are you around? I was wondering if I could get a little company. Spirit tells you her secret for falling asleep when she's feeling restless. I like to listen to flute music, dab on some essential oils, and steam my pores. Really? What? Even the dead like to relax. 
I don't really have any of those things around. We just had the music. Hello? Ooh. <gasps> oh, she trusts us with her unique special item. Spirit reaches out and presents you with a unique item. It's a small comb carved from bamboo. I guess you could hold on to this. It was a gift from my mother. I will want it back, though. And if you lose it, well... You'll get your revenge on me? If it's the last thing I do. <laughs> you finally start to feel sleepy. Except, maybe this isn't really a sleepy feeling. Maybe you're paralyzed. You try to keep your eyes open, but you can't. Darkness overtakes you. The dark voice from earlier speaks to you again. It shouldn't still be as spooky. By now you've had a whole day of strange voices in your head, but this one is still undeniably odd. The human body is made up of 60% water. Did you know that? Of course you did. I thought it was 70. Wait, huh? Everyone knows that. Even the amnesiac video game protagonists. Well, guess what? Drink as much as you'd like. You'll never get to 100%. You hear me? Don't think I don't see what you're up to. Uh, hmm. Ocean doesn't like what I've been doing. You wake awake suddenly to see someone looming over you. Yo! Huntress is rifling through your pockets. Oh, you're awake. I wasn't stealing from you, merely trying to get to know you better by seeing what sort of trinkets you keep close. I saw you with the sphere right before bedtime. Look, I'm not saying I don't trust them, but, well, yes, I am saying that. I don't trust anyone I don't already have tied up. So, I was making sure they didn't do anything. Fishy. And I was making sure you're not a soldier. Soldiers killed my father, you know. Well, I've got you. You should really consider spending some more time with me. I'm not scary. I'll let you get back to bed. It's been a long day. Shh. Huntress places a gigantic hand on your forehead, and your eyes flutter closed. Finally alone, for real this time. Maybe. You drift off to sleep again. Hopefully you're not poisoned. Wait a second, where are we? This isn't- oh jeez, it is. It's one of those reality show confessional rooms where all of the contestants talk directly to camera. <laughs> Can you blame me for not getting along well with others? I mean, I haven't had a real conversation with anyone since I was a child. I take the fact that I haven't slaughtered the newcomer for their meat yet as a win. Look, I'm always full of rage. The key is knowing how to control your rage so you can use it. I am a master of self-control. And right now, I'm using all the self-control I can muster. Because today was a disaster. Let's just say I didn't love it. <laughs> that was funny. Laugh. I said laugh, damn it. Anyway, I'm planning to kill this idiot. Don't tell them, though. I want to lead them on a little more. It will make it that much better for me when they're screaming. Everyone hates me this run. Oh god. Ah, uh, god. I'm not really sure how to feel about Effie. On one hand, everyone I've ever cared about has met an awful fate. Though it's probably good for Effie if they just keep ignoring me. I know that everyone thinks of me as a beautiful, cold-blooded monster. I can't help it. Circulation just isn't my thing. I don't choose to be cold. This cute hat and robe, okay, those are a choice, sure. If someone were to come around and capture my heart, at least that beats being stabbed in it. Besides, if I'm gonna get bloody revenge on a society that has used me to throw me away, maybe it wouldn't hurt to have a little help. This is an entirely different situation than we were in last time. I'm so excited. Oh, dude, we got entirely different answers from everyone this confessional. You open your eyes. The sun is shining. There's not a cloud in the sky. And you feel great. 
totally well rested. Everyone rolls into the dining area to light up those sexy little bellies with pancakes and bacon and so much for maintaining these beach fods. We're all half naked in a tropical paradise. Can we get some strawberries here? A yogurt? Magic powers only get you so far. Even killers watch their sodium intake. You take your plate and sit down, thinking about yesterday and the whirlwind of feelings you experienced. Danger, dread, disorientation. It was like going through puberty again, except all in one day on a beautiful and mysterious island. It looks like you're not the only one doing some introspection though. Trapper stands up to talk about how his day went, in case anyone was wondering. I can't imagine you could make me any angrier today than you did yesterday, but I really hope you do. I really, really hope you do. Unrelated, anyone see where I left my cleaver? <laughs> Just kidding, I always know where my cleaver is. Well, that was bizarre. Back to your breakfast. Nope. Did everyone sleep well? I did. Or should I say did not? I haven't slept in 20 years on account of the whole burning quest for familiar revenge thing. And last night was no different. So in that case, it was exactly how it should be. Got a lot of reading done though. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go back to quietly resenting being trapped here with you all while looking cute doing so. And now they're all looking at you expectantly. Oh wait, you? Are you supposed to stand up and explain how yesterday made you feel? Uh, I think I need to process everything by myself. I'll see you all soon. Damn, what a power play. Keeping him wanting more. You're getting good at this game, uh, sexy true life experience. Shame you didn't get any breakfast, but so be it. Here we go. After breakfast, you head to the hot tub by yourself to clear your head. Yesterday was, in short, a lot. Before you get there, though, something catches your attention. No, no, stick it in there. A little more. A little more. Yeah, that's it. Yes. How does that feel? Intense. Nice. Yeah, that feels right. This... This is uncomfortable. Now, I want you to take that and put it right... Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Just like that? Exactly like that. I swear, I had no idea these two even do, um, whatever it is they're doing. I'm afraid to look. Please say something so they know you're close by and can hear everything. Uh, oh wow, look at that super cool bottle of Trickster brand sun can suntan lotion someone left on a chair. And you know, anyone know where I can buy some? Damn it. Oh, come on, a little privacy please. Dwight is panting and Claudette has a curious look in her eye. Uh, Awooga? Sorry, I didn't know how else to let you know I was here and I could hear you. Well, you know. No, what? What did you think we were doing? You were doing... I don't know exactly what you were doing, but it sounded like... Uh, what? You think two people trying to find new ways to kill each other in a desperate search to make their own death permanent is fun? Oops. We get five minutes to ourselves every day, and we spend it hoping if we stab each other in just the right spot, we won't get resurrected. Let's go, lover boy. I noted all our entry wins, and our five minutes is up anyway. Good luck, Effie. You're gonna need it. You're heading to the hot tub by yourself to clear your head. Yesterday was, in short, a lot. So far today, sorry, so far today has been exhausting too. But you're dedicated to achieving a true centered sense of calm. No drama, no bullshit, just soaking up sun in a heated pool. Today you're on a date with you. All is going to plan until a shadow blocks your precious sun. Oh, spirit, that checks out. You two have gotten pretty cozy. We should get out of here. I know a place that brings a bit of welcome darkness to this tropical nightmare. Best of all, I'm the only one that seems to know about it, so we won't be bothered there. I don't even know why I'm telling you really. It's my private spot. But I guess I've got a feeling that you'll appreciate it in the way that I do. Not like these other killers. They don't get me. I get you, spirit! But I'll get them. Oh, I'll get them. And I'll get my father, too. And I'll punish him for what he did to my mother and me. Spirit radiates a menacing aura, waving her sword around in the air as she threatens, well, the entire universe. It's scary and more than a little hot if you get turned on by maddening, menacing, sorry, 
Look, all this time on Murderous Island has got us both a little confused about things. I'm choosing to lean into it. I'd suggest you do the same. You've seen her get mad, which is probably enough to scare you into compliance. But you've also seen that there's a more sensitive side hiding within her. Which one do you think will win out? You consider her offer, but before you can decide if you want to go off with spirit, the wraith interjects, Wraith, where are you coming from? Honestly, spirit's great. She's the only one around here that doesn't totally get on my nerves. I guess you've got good taste, but I don't know. We could hang out, and I could show you some cool stuff if you want. Over... Forget I said anything. Sir, I am having a moment with my waifu. Whoop! Here. Tough choice. You weigh your options quickly because you can only go on one date today. And you also don't want to be hacked to pieces for saying the wrong thing. So, who will it be? You know. You already know. We going for the one true bear. I, I gotta go with Spirit. You've made the correct decision, but know this, just because you picked me doesn't mean I'm gonna slobber all over you like a dog, understand? That's fine, queen. Well, of course, I step on me, you know? <laughs> you still got a lot to prove to me. I want to believe that our connection is real, but I've been hurt before, literally, with a katana. A katana that I now wield in spectral form. You feel me? Because you will feel me if you try any of that macho trapper crap. Yeah, I feel you. Before you ask Claudette and Dwight to clarify, I'll just let you know that, that yes, it is too late to change your answer now. Going to go on a date with... Ooh, we got an achievement. Morose match. Let's go. You and Spira arrive at the coast overlooking the Black Lighthouse. It's old and decrepit, but still impressive. There's something magnetic about it. You can see why Spira would be drawn to such a place. You look Spira up and down and notice that she's wearing all black just like the lighthouse. I'm noticing a bit of a theme. Is black your favorite color? Black isn't really a color at all. It's the absence of color. It's a void. Oh my god, she's so right. It's actually the absence of light. It was perfect. She's... Yes. Like me. Spirit smiles. Nature abhors a vacuum. Not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. The lapping waves on the shore of the coast set a romantic tone. The fog that surrounds Spirit everywhere she goes blends perfectly with the mist rolling up over the rocky shoreline. She's at one with this place, and so are you. The peace doesn't last too long, however, as the lighthouse lets out an eerie howl like a monster dying. Spiraling black light stretches out across the sky. Huh? A black light? The spirit has to yell at you just to be heard. Oh yeah! It does that! The light and the sound recede and the two of you sit in silence. Spirit lays a towel down and then pats on it gently. Clearly she wants your company, so you oblige. When you do, she takes out some sunscreen and hands it to you. Are we gonna be uh, rubbing this off? You're not exactly sure what to do. Is this an invitation to get in a little hands-on action? What else could it be? This is Trapper vibes. I feel like this is gonna be like too oblivious. Let's just say thanks. Thanks, I forgot to bring my own when I uh, lost my memory and fell into the ocean. No problem, I figured as much. Spirit turns away while you slather lotion all over your body. It's fine. You need any help reaching those difficult spots? You see a hand float around your back. <laughs> oh, I feel like I have to go. <laughs> you swallow hard, trying to make room in your throat for words to come out, but nothing does. 
You're embarrassed enough and decide to just live with what you've got. No! Oh no, I messed up really bad! I thought Gulf would be like, oh, I'm nervous, you know? Oh fuck, we're we doing so much in this run, I'm so sorry, oh god. A few moments later. We're back. Sure, why not? Spirit's hand on your back is ice cold, but she has a soft touch. When she's done, she takes care of herself. You watch as Spirit applies sunscreen to herself in the most unique way by floating her own hand around her back to spread it on. Ooh. Uh, I don't want to piss her off. I'm worried that this will turn into something like weird. And then she'll be mad. Say nothing, we'll get nothing done. If I ask about the glass, uh, the fact that your hands just float out around you like that, you can reach things way easier than I can. It's almost like you're some kind of superhero. Uh, <laughs> A few moments later. Okay, so maybe we ask about the shards? So if you don't mind, what's the deal with all those shards of glass sticking out from all over your body? This is what she got to open? You really want to know? You're not creeped out by them? Girl, anything that makes you happy, like, let's go. You're not creeped out, just nervous, because you know the answer might be very personal, but she's a person you want to get to know. This is exactly it! I was nervous! <laughs> I was just thinking about what you must have gone through to end up like that. It had to have been horrible. It was worse than death. At least death ends eventually. But I wouldn't want to forget it. It literally made me who I am right now. Truth is, I could pull all of these bits of glass that are stuck in my flesh out right now if I wanted to. But I don't want to. Each shard is a reminder of what my father did to me and what the world did to him. That's why I refuse to play the universe's game. I hate the idea that I'll be forced to succumb to pressure the way he did in the end. The way that fear and anger filled him up and then came bursting out. The way his misery flooded our home and drowned us all. Eesh. It's hard not to think about revenge. The dragon inside me, it's doing to me what the world did to him. I have to fight it, even though it gives me strength. I must maintain control. You're stronger than he ever was. I'm sure of it. <laughs> I appreciate that, Effie. I suppose a little help isn't a bad thing. In life, in love. This world is a lot to endure alone. Maybe I could use a little assistance reaching my delicate toes for a bit of lotion. You know, having your body can into these eventual poses. It really does the number on my joints. <gasps> no, on my feet. Oh, my God, I'm fucking choking, bro. No. Oh, my God, I'm so sorry, spirit. Oh, this looks so bad. Oh, but she's happy. <laughs> I'm so bad. Well, <laughs> fuck. I suppose that the lotion made it to where it was supposed to be going. Eventually. And you weren't too incredibly wasteful. I'm not a woman who believes in rushing through things just to get them done. If there is a next time, I'm sure you'll do even better then. Thank you, spirit. <laughs> you look up at the lighthouse. It's ominous dark form hovering above this moment between spirit and yourself. Evil as it clearly is, in this case, it does you a solid by blurting out another ominous moon and burst of black light that rescues you from this awkward silence. What? From seemingly out of nowhere, an ancient-looking ship appears in the water. It glows, itself a thing of death, a spirit of a ship that once sailed these seas centuries ago. A tattered black flag wisps 
whips in the ocean air above the ship as it careens towards the shore before crashing on the rocks. It must have been drawn in by the lighthouse. You hear the distant shouting of sailors as the old wooden ghost ship breaks up and sinks into the water. What the fuck? Within a minute, the ocean is quiet again, except for the waves. Note to self, hungry sharks. But these time-traveling pirates, or whoever they were, you're half sure you saw one of those skull and crossbone flags. Aren't the only ones drawn here today. <laughs> Bro, go away. I'm not trying to get you this time. It's Wraith. He has emerged from the palm trees behind you. I didn't come here to break up your date or something. I came here for that. Wraith points to the lighthouse. It is indifferent to his attention. I've been seeing it in my dreams, shining its strange light on me. I can't avoid it. Through woods and walls, nothing seems to stop it from reaching out to me. Duh, it's a haunted lighthouse. It does that to everyone at some point. You're no more special than me. Those dead pirates or that mermaid I saw washed up on the shore that one time. Mermaids? Ew. Mermaids, by the way, aren't even close to as beautiful in person as they are in movies. More sea witch than underwater princess, if you get my drift. It's all part of a vast conspiracy, an epic river of lies that runs beneath the island or something. Pretty sure I... <coughs> I'm pretty sure I figured it out. The basics, anyhow. If you come with me, I can... You can get cut. Spirit waves her katana, nearly trimming a couple buttons off of Wraith's tropical top. He takes the hint and backs a few steps, backs away a few steps slowly. For the quiet guy, he never really shuts up. Okay, be that way, you'll see. Alone at last, tension broken, deathly moans quiet, and Wraith banished back to wherever he hangs out. He scooch closer to spirit, breathing in the damp, foggy air that seems to emanate from her. It's not quite clear how that whole fog thing works, but you don't even care. You're feeling this moment. <laughs> Spirit seems to be feeling it too, as she starts to adjust her robe, and you get a peek at the bathing suit beneath. For someone who seems intent on proving how little she cares about what everyone else thinks, she put a lot of work into getting into that suit. It's got straps for days. Awuga. However, you're so focused on what's happening with Spirit, you don't see the next interruption coming. And Claudette and Dwight burst in on you and interrupt whatever you were doing. It doesn't seem like they were worried they'd bump into much. We're here to make a very dramatic announcement. Well, technically, we're here to invite you to join us back at the beach. Oh, where we'll be making a very dramatic announcement. It's hard being the producers and the host. Aren't survivors supposed to work in groups of four? Ooh! A little nod at the game let's go when you arrive at the beach you realize you were set up despite promising an announcement Dwight and Claudette simply stand quietly this isn't at all what was promised wait a minute there's no announcement here Wraith I get it we chose you last time but there is a, a me you got mud in your ears friend I told you to get lost don't you see? Loss is what I am, and so are you, but I know the way out. I've got a map back in my secret lair, literally and figuratively. Yeah, I know the difference. That's why you should ditch spirit and come spend the rest of the night with me instead. Got a secret lair? Damn it. Who said anything about secret lair? I said I've got, um, a sap. Sap in my secret hair. There's a flap on my secret chair. Don't change the subject. Don't ask me what he's talking about. You're trying to make a mess of the first nice day I've had in. I don't know how long because it's not even clear what year it is, but in a while. I'm not about to be ditched for the likes of you. Why are they always competing? It's not me messing things up. Like, I keep trying to tell you, it's this dang island. Come to accept a difficult truth. What's happening here? Well, I'm convinced that it's our fate. It's not anyone's decision. It's simply the way it will be. There's no use fighting it. If I do have a fate, my fate is to win every fight that comes my way. Got it? Oh, 
you hide. I've seen you hide. You do your little, your phase walking routine. What do you call that? It's basically cloaking. And we all know that cloaking is a type of hiding. Oh, <laughs> You cloak. I don't cloak. I'm not a cloaker. I phase walk out in the open. You just can't see me. You have no idea what they're talking about, but this sure sounds like some video game community forum thread min minutia, if there ever was such a thing. Not that you know about that either, dude. This is so good. It sure doesn't seem like Dwight and Claudette are going to stop this, so it's on you. <laughs> hmm. I think I was brought here to make this choice, so I'm going to do that now. And I choose our girl. When it comes down to it, neither of those two seems easy to love. I mean, damn, Spirit literally has broken glass shards sticking out of her. But she has a certain charm to her gloom. Spirit and I were actually having a nice time. Besides, if it's my fate to end up on this island, well, to hell with fate, really. And don't take this the wrong way, Wraith, but the amount of awkwardness you pack into a single day, no wonder you're so skinny. What? This is so mean. All that second guessing yourself must burn a lot of calories. No offense taken, it's... Yeah, okay, it's true. I can be a little awkward, I guess, sometimes. Right, so I'm gonna stick with Spirit. Spirit breathes a sigh of relief. I've got enough revenging to do without having to kill you and Wraith, too. Sheesh! Spirit walks you around a corner to a spirit walks you around the corner to show you something that she discovered in this place and knew it was meant to be connected with her journey a cherry tree it is just a small sapling but it has begun to sprout flowers it doesn't make sense to see a cherry tree here in this place it also doesn't make sense to see a ghost in a black bathing suit so you just accept it as spirit steps up to the tree a cold breeze ah look at the little cherry blossoms uh, what? Oh, the petals. Ah. Ah. Spirit steps up to the tree. A cold breeze pulls some petals off, and they all come cascading through the air around you both. This is such an animal moment. Oh my god. Do you know the meaning of the cherry blossom? They're beautiful, but also quite symbolic. Of course, like all good symbols, their meaning is pretty complicated. What do they mean to you? For many people, being among cherry blossoms is like being at a celebration of life. People travel great distances just to be near their vibrant beauty. However, as beautiful as they may be, they aren't magical. They're simply flowers. They quickly die and fade away, and for this reason, they are also a symbol of the fleeting nature of life, of our fragile, fragile mortality. Yeah, I think they only last for like a week when they bloom. What a good moment. In a way, it's the specter of looming death that calls attention to the special moment to see and appreciate life. How does that duality make you feel, Effie? Hmm. Shit. Okay. Uh... As you look at the tree and consider a spirit's question, you reflect on your own current predicament. Stranded here, no understanding of why, no control. The beauty of this island, the attention to the attention of such an interesting companion, it should bring you joy, but it comes at the price of being completely confused and hopeless. You look down and see a crumbling cherry blossom on the ground at your feet. As you stare at it, something begins to rage inside you, like a dragon. How can anyone find comfort, even for a moment, with death and decay looming on the horizon? It was the right thing. <sighs> it makes me so frustrated. It makes me so mad. I want to do something about it. I want to strike back against this shitty reality. Spirit lets you go off, staying calm despite your bubbling rage. She must know thoughts like this. Is that why she asked you? So that you'd see things from her point of view? I want to be alive! You feel connected to her at this moment, more than you have at any point before. You wonder, does she feel the same? Once the fallen cherry blossoms represented the souls of the samurai warriors, those with noble characters, those who did not fear death, those who were killed in the greatest sacrifice to honor their emperor. 
Their lives were short, but their purpose gave them beauty. Those warriors saw death coming, but they never despaired. They stood and faced it. They held their swords and struck down their fear. But despite the samurai spirit that lives on in me, in my noble bloodline, my life has ended, but my death continues to stretch on. The cycle is frozen. This cherry tree, it's not real. Though its petals fall, they soon replenish. It's as if they were installed here by someone. You watch as Spirit chooses her words very carefully. By something with no respect for the balance of life and death. We're sorry to interrupt. You know we don't believe you, right? Yep. We're just here to tell you that it's time for dinner, silly. Get it while it's hot. I guess it's time to go or whatever. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I enjoyed it. I did too, Spirit. I did too. Me too. Very, very enjoy. What a fun day you've been having. I can see it written all over your face. You're shining. And that's not just the remaining anxious sweat from spending an afternoon courting a psycho killer. She's not psycho, okay? No, no, you are really getting, really, no, no, you are, bleh. no, no, you are really feeling this whole romantic experience. Don't worry, I'll keep your dirty little secrets. Congrats, by the way, on getting this far. I'm as surprised as you are that these four are falling for you. No, not because of your personality, but because you just met them yesterday. Dinner will be served shortly, but certain power brokers would like to know about your day. Would you like to share your day with the rest of the group? You've had an interesting day, that's for sure. But how will you describe it to the others? Say too much or too little, and it could affect your standing with the group. Oh, shit. Is Koi the play? <gasps> Wait, is this the right answer? Wasn't really a date. More like two people avoiding everyone else and choosing to be alone, but doing it in a relatively close proximity to each other. <gasps> she loved it, let's go! That's exactly right. I couldn't have said anything of value better myself. Ooh. Spirit is clearly happy with the way you portrayed your date. No surprise. She doesn't like people getting into her business. Dwight and Claudette bring out dinner. Everyone eats in silence. No one trusts anyone now. And they are all very tired. Everyone, if you would please be so kind as to follow us to the fire pit, we'd greatly appreciate it. We've been told something big is gonna happen. Something that will change everything. You can go willingly or you can go unwillingly. You have no choice. Tough cookies. Did you have a choice on how you said that, dweeb? Yes, and I immediately regret how I did. Good. Something needs to change around here. Fire is a rebirth. To the fire again! You take a seat on a comfortable log, feeling the fire's heat against your skin, and wait for the other killers to take their places, wondering who will want to tell a story this time. Oh, cool. I know everyone is looking at you. So, you know, do something? Should I pick someone to tell a story? Or we could play charades? Boggle? Um, well, we were actually thinking, why don't you tell us a story? Alright, uh, I didn't choose this last time, so I'm gonna go with this. I'd rather not. Why? Do you have something to hide? Uh... I don't think this was the right choice. You're telling us you don't have a single story in your entire life? So sad. Truly, humanity has reached its crumbling mid year. I just want to hear your voice. Why are you being like this? Okay. Gracious, will that let me do it? Because you're all s much better storytellers than I. Look at you, wooing everyone without offending anyone. The killers blush, flattered, except spirit. She sees through you. Sorry. Okay, that was not a very good story. I don't mean to insult you, but it was actually quite bad. No, sorry. We didn't tell a story. Who else would you like to hear a story from tonight? You look from killer to killer, trying to decide who might be the most entertaining. Spirit all the way. 
I suppose I could tell a story. I don't really want to, but anything I say is sure to be better than whatever you get out of anyone else in this group. Like all good stories, I stole this one from someone in the past who is dead now and can't do anything about it. It's called The Bride. Er, technically I suppose, the fiance. One winter, a young couple decided that the next spring they would be married. The two were madly in love and could not wait for the snow to melt, so they could join in matrimony and unite their souls for eternity. Per the latest bridal trends, they decided to have their wedding ceremony at the edge of the woods by the beautiful shabby chic farmhouse. This is a corpse bride, I believe. Together, they spent months planning the details of the wedding. The two created invitations, figured out seating arrangements, and tasted 100 cakes before settling on the perfect one. They chose Lilikoi, by the way. So fancy. When it came to figuring out the decorations, however, the bride, or the fiancé, I guess, since she wasn't actually married yet, wanted to take the lead and set the style. After all, her boyfriend had been wearing cargo shorts and open toe sandals for pretty much their entire relationship, so he was definitely not to be trusted. Having decided on such a lovely natural setting for the ceremony, the fiancé decided that she would create unique floral arrangements from the local wildflowers that surrounded the farmhouse. I guess I'm wrong, maybe not Corpse Bride? As soon as the sun rose on the, day, the first day of spring, she set off into the woods. Each day she spent hours mapping out where the best blooms could be found and prepared to pick them herself the morning of the wedding so that they'd be uh, sorry, so that they'd be at the height of their freshness and beauty. Enamored by the incredible variety of flowers in the woods, she surveyed the bride, or the fiancé, since they had not yet been married, became obsessed with knowing just how many there were, so that she could choose the absolute best. When the fateful morning of her big day finally came, the fiancé told her husband-to-be that she had one final errand before the wedding. Excited for the ceremony to come, she dressed in her beautiful white gown and set off into the woods to gather flowers. Treading carefully, she followed her route, selecting only the best stems and collecting them in a basket. However, when she came upon a once familiar clearing, something was not as she expected. Somehow, it was more beautiful now than it had ever been before, and just on the edge of her view, was a new bush filled with blossoms so vibrant and colorful she became dizzy just looking at them. But the fiancé ignored her sudden spell and pressed ahead, scooping up flower after flower. And every time she did, she noticed just further ahead and possibly even more beautiful blossoms. Carried by the sweet fragrance of spring, the bride, or fiancé, crept farther and farther into the woods until she turned a corner, stepped over a mossy, mossy fallen tree trunk, and realized she had been here before. But this wasn't the clearing she remembered, or at least not how she remembered it. The flowers were suddenly overripe, decaying, falling from their stems into festering moldy piles on the floor. Where bees had been, and now only flies buzzed. Where the scene of flowers had once intoxicated her, the odor of mildew now made her sick. She turned and looked back, but the path was dark. Into a shadowy glen she walked, and walked, and walked. That day, as guests gathered at the farmhouse, the fiancé was nowhere to be seen. Her friends, family, and loved ones began to look for her, but to no avail. They searched the pasture, the tree line, and into the forest, there were no beautiful wildflowers or young lovers to be seen. Just old dead trees, trampled vines, and moss-covered rocks. The fiancé stayed a fiancé for eternity. Always wondering, looking for fresher blooms to clip, but never finding them. Distracted by a never-ending search for perfection, unable to see that you're loved for who you are. Out there all alone thought it was beautiful and sad just like someone we know that was story time Dwight I'm gonna need you to shut your yap trap you know we need to get back to that thing we do when whenever we're not on screen okay okay you have fun tonight and try not to wink wink end up dead spirit oh you picked me yay
What happened between the beach and now? Sorry, that was rude of me. I despise phoniness, so I should be honest with you. You make for interesting company, and I love the idea of winning over these other killers at all costs. Even when I hate the game and the prize. But I had a long day. Floating, subverting, expectations, grinding my teeth as I imagined sweet, sweet revenge takes a lot out of me. So don't stop bringing your A-game, alright? It might seem like I hate everything, and getting to really... Uh, and getting to really know who I am is an impossible task. Not worth trying, but too bad. You won't know unless you search deep inside yourself and bring everything you've got. Or just say the exact right thing at the right time and melt my cold heart in an instant. I don't know the rules here any better than you do. See you at the bar, I guess. Okay. Wait, she does want to hang out? I'm so confused. She sends me so many mixed signals. <sighs> you arrive at the bar to find Dwight and Claudette both holding cocktail shakers, surrounded by a bevy of bottles of assorted booze. Who's ready to get wasted? Well, I don't drink, so not me. The daiquiri was her choice. I had a feeling. I had a feeling of all the drinks. Uh, you really don't drink, ever? Is that like, because it will just fall out of a hole in your stomach thing, or? I don't drink alcohol, because alcohol is poison of the body and the mind. And I don't need to act like a fool to have a good time thing. Then why did you choose a mixology lesson as your romantic nighttime activity? Everyone knows this kind of date is just an excuse to get loaded up on booze and make terrible decisions. It's true, not a single person has ever learned anything at one of these things. Wait, no, that's not true. You learned how to tie a cherry knot on a stem using only your tongue. Whoa, whoa, who ordered this soda with a splash of my private business because that's off menu? Well, I know what I'm drinking to forget tonight. Mixology is a real thing, and it doesn't require alcohol to be interesting. I'll have you all know that I worked at a restaurant before I was violently executed. By your father. On whom you will have your bloody vengeance. Right, right. Well, so be it. I have my bartending license. How about you, Effie? Do you drink? Ooh, I'm gonna stay sober because spirit stays sober. I've got the impression that tonight will be a night I want to remember perfectly, so I'm gonna pass on the alcoholic drinks. Here, here. Alcohol is a false escape. Besides, it's not like sober people can't have fun. You watch as Spirit picks up a bump cherry and roughly stabs a little plastic sword through it. Cherry juice splatters everywhere and its little fruity guts flop out onto Spirit's lap. Oopsie. One of the upsides to wearing black, it hardly shows stains. True facts, Spirit. Spitting facts. No take backsies. Go, lovebirds. What drink shall we make? Um. Hmm. I'm tossing up between a zombie and a dark and stormy. Zombies are so fucking good, by the way. I don't think it's fancy beer. I'll do it. How about a dark and stormy drink for my dark and stormy date? Okay, that one is cute. You cute girl. Please allow us to demonstrate how a dark and stormy is made. First, rum, or in this case, rum extract, and a bit of apple juice is poured over ice. Oh, that's so smart! Rum extract in, like, um, virgin drinks? And then fresh ginger beer is added in. Garnish with a lime meal and drink the end. Do you think you're up to the challenge of replicating this recipe, Effie? Replicating rum substitute ginger beer over ice. Don't forget the lime wheel. Rum substitute and ginger beer over ice with a lime wheel. I wonder how that tastes. Not sure I appreciate your tone, but yes, you got it. You're a natural assassin, natural. You and Dwight might have more in common than don't you dare. Spear seems to be in a lovely mood as she sips her dark and stormy. She's not even rolling her eyes at your petty behavior. 
On cue, a literal dark storm begins to make its way from the ocean. You taste your own dark and stormy as you watch the clouds approaching. It's quite refreshing. Isn't this fun? Honestly, it's the most drama-free fun I've had since I got here. And since you picked a simple but delicious drink, we've got plenty of time left to relax. Wanna make out a little? You breathe in a sip of your drink and immediately begin coughing before you can get a yes out. Poof. Lightning strikes a palm tree on the beach and it immediately starts a fire. The activity ends abruptly as Claudette and Dwight usher the two of you away from the bar. I feel like I got robbed of a, of a very serious moment with my girl. Uh. The gang's all together again on the volleyball court. Seems like only yesterday you were sitting on the sidelines watching everyone get sweaty. That's because it was. Oi, it feels like I've been here a lot longer than that actually. In no reality survival dating competition parody would be complete without singling out one of our contestants who is already teetering on the edge of a psychological break and giving them a little push. Hold on, this has been a survival dating competition parody the entire time and I'm just now finding out about it? Come on, the signs were there, you just didn't read them. Welcome to Murderer's Island! It's now time to eliminate one of the killers. That's right, tomorrow one of these sexy slicers will not be eligible to take you on a date. Who's it gonna be? I'm- okay, hear me out, I'm kinda scared to eliminate Trapper, I think he's gonna try to kill me. Worth, though? Oh boy, I got an achievement. This is very simple. Trapper, you scare the living shit out of me. You're eliminated. That's fair. Honestly, though, I don't care. You suck. But not in a good way. You bore me. You personality free maggot. I wouldn't even. It wouldn't even be fun to kill you. Which. <laughs> which I was totally going to do tomorrow, the first chance I got. So really, this is a win win for both of us. Still might kill you, though. Out of the principle of for eliminating me. I'll sleep with both eyes open and have fun on your date tomorrow. That's not ominous at all. Now that you've broken the heart of someone heartless, you should go get some shut-eye. And don't worry too much about the broken heart you left behind. Because, of course, they'll be receiving a consolation prize. They might not be good. They might not get to go home with Effie when this is all over, but they'll never sleep alone again. That's right, we're sending our eliminated player home with... Papa! Their own mostly new trickster body pillow. I'd love to know who had it before. The best, next best thing to the real trickster. It might not hug you back, but it definitely won't try and stab you. And how do we know? Because I've tried it. And that's right, it's Dwight Twisted. Alright, well, you know, sometimes I should read the whole thing before I start saying things. Um, it was tested by Dwight. We got that now. Claudette approved. I hope you sleep well tonight, Effie. You're my hero for what you've accomplished. How can you sleep tonight knowing what you've done? No, not because of the guilt. I mean, knowing that there's a legit homicidal maniac who hates you so close by. How can you sleep tonight? knowing what you'll do tomorrow. I don't know how you'll do it, but you better go before Dwight and Claudette come back and put you to sleep themselves. You know these two. Schedule, schedule, schedule. Wow, what a crazy way to end the day. An elimination? I didn't even know it was that kind of game. Absolutely, Dwight. Answers that question. Yep. <laughs> Let's check in with everyone, especially our loser. Everyone deserves a send-off. What? Did I break the game? But we eliminated Trapper. Am I being punked? We'll see how things go tomorrow, I suppose. I'm not expecting anything. I tend to shut my mind off during hard times. I know I seem all excited and devil may care, but the truth is I'm really a pessimist at heart. I don't really know what's happening here. I honestly haven't been paying attention. Oh, Effie? Sorry, I forgot. I'm focusing on other things. More important things. One way or another, I won't be here for much longer. I don't handle rejection well. At least I don't think I do. No one has ever been dumb enough to reject me before. Oh, okay, I think I misread. Yeah, the more I think about it, the angrier I'm getting. And I'm the giant- I'm a giant rage monster, so everyone in this room should be scared right now. Turn the camera off.
Of course Effie is into me. Why wouldn't they be? I'm thoughtful, beautiful, surrounded by a calming mist. I've also got great hair. And since I'm technically dead, I'm extremely low maintenance. Look, I don't like to throw the term anime waifu around. Shh, Around too often, but... If the body pillow fits, snuggle it. You know what I mean? Anyway, seems like everyone's had their shot to annoy me tonight. So hit the hay and get some rest. Tomorrow is going to be a doozy. Soft sunlight warms your skin, nudging you awake. Also, you're using a killer crab as a pillow, which it's sort of okay with. You notice your stomach flutters with butterflies. Someone's in love. Or you've been infected with zombie butterflies in your sleep. It has happened here before, but it's probably the love thing. It's time! Claudette gestures over to the beach where the killers all stand flaked by tiki torches. So, are you ready? Of course you're not, but too bad. We're on schedule. We're on a schedule. You make your way over to the row of hotties. Claudette and Dwight stand off to the side, hands behind their backs. It's been quite the 24 hours, but there are clearly sparks in the air. And I'm not just talking about this rusty chainsaw, though I do recommend staying away from those sparks. It's time for a newcomer to confess their love. Some pretty lilies. Beautiful. You've done good, Dwight. This is a lovely bouquet. Effie, who do you select to receive these flowers and spend the day with today? You know there is only one. You approach Spirit, peering below the brim of her impressively large hat and into her haunting arms. Spirit, since I met you, I've been enchanted by your presence. You've challenged me to be a better person and resisted the urge to show me the sharp end of your katana. <laughs> For that, I thank you. I'm ready to take our relationship to the next level. <laughs> and we shall, and we shall, up to the eye of the dark storm that is our reality, to the lantern room of the black lighthouse. It's time to see what you're made of, Effie. You arrive at the beach near the majestic black lighthouse. Its imposing form towers above you. A flock of birds circles lazily, no sense of fear or urgency, as if circling a corpse that hasn't moved in ages. I'm excited about today, see? Spirit places her wrist delicately in your hand and presses your fingers down against her skin. It's cool to the touch, but you feel... Is that the faintest of pulses? My blood is absolutely pumping. So what happens now? Now I show you something that no one has ever seen up close before. Well, no one who has lived to tell about it. We're going there. Spirit points to the top of the lighthouse amongst the circling birds. What's actually up there? Have you seen it? Ray, get out of here. Why are you intruding so much? Hey y'all, how's everyone doing today? I should have eliminated him. Uh, hi, Wraith. You sure seem chipper today. Something strange is definitely going on with this guy. Well, something else strange. Something different than what's usually going on. Wraith takes a deep breath, sucking in the ocean air like it's the greatest air that has ever been sucked. Effie, thank you. Thank you for choosing someone, anyone else to go on a date with today. Alone again forever. This is how I was meant to be. I feel alive. Are you done? We're kind of, you know, on that date you just mentioned. I'm glad you're feeling better, Wraith, but like she said, we're in the middle of something. You mind? Oh, right, right, right. So what you doing? Heading up to the Eye of the Lighthouse? I love it up there. You can really see the whole island from up there. In fact, Spirit, I thought you said no one has been up there and lived to tell about it, but this sounds exactly like telling about it. Technically, I don't think Wraith counts as being alive. I mean, I don't maintain the canon, but... Spirit waves her arms at Wraith from head to toe. And if he's not dead, now he's gonna be when I punish him for interrupting our date. Hey now, we can solve our problems without our hair floating up into any menacing shapes. I'll just be over here, running away, enjoying the view. You know, I think Wraith was kidding about that whole being up there. Honestly, the view isn't even of the island. What you can see is mostly ocean, on account of it being, you know, a lighthouse. 
However, that does bring up an interesting point regarding your... How do I say it? Spirit's hand floats up as she scratches her head contemplatively. You don't usually see her at a loss for words like this. What's your uh, mortal status? Because despite what our lanky friends seem to think, the lighthouse is not to be trifled with. I think I'm alive. I'm here with you, walking this beach, feeling the water on my feet, feeling the sun on my skin. Here uh, with me, the spirit. Does that really make you alive? I guess I don't know. If you come with me up into the eye of the black lighthouse, you may never return. Is that a risk you're willing to take? Because we have something. I won't deny it. I feel it. I'd hate for you to simply turn to ash. If we were to commit right here and now to figuring this out as friends, we could put that risk off for another time. Just be friends? Ouch. Is this her way of letting you down easy? I don't know if I want that. Friendship? I want you. That's why I choose you. I don't need another friend. I want something more. I'd risk my life for it. Spirit smiles a quirky, devilish smile. Right this way. She's so cute. Inside, the lighthouse is almost pitch black. It was seemingly day when you stepped through the door, but inside this place, it's like a void. The last thing you see as the final rays of sun leaves you is a horrible sight, a petrified body laying on the stairs, reaching not up but down, as if it had been crawling. Watch your step. The things we do for love. When you arrive in the lantern room at the top of the black lighthouse, you breathe a sigh of relief. The light is out and seemingly defunct. Dust cakes the room as though it hasn't been operated in a century. However, somehow, it was just morning a moment ago, but now it's night. What do you mean a moment ago? We've been standing here looking out over the ocean all day. I've really enjoyed the peaceful time together with you, taking in the view, standing in complete silence for hours. It was kind of my perfect date. Really? I don't remember that. I just called it the perfect date and you can't be bothered to remember it. What kind of game are you playing with me? I want to remember it. It's just that for some reason my mind is completely blank. But hey, I'm, I'm not dead. Oh, you're already dead. And have been this whole time. Mm, that's true. <laughs> Maybe we'll never know. It doesn't look like the light is working. Even turned off, the light has a power to it. The massive line refracts moonlight through itself. A subtle sparkle that has a hypnotic effect. Maybe that's where the day went? Staring into the light as the sun fell and the moon rose. Thanks for spending the day with me. I really had a good time. I did too, spirit. Anywho, it's time to go. Here, let me just flip on the light for the staircase so it's easier to get down. Hmm, the stairs look pretty dark. Maybe a... Spirit is interrupted by a strange hum, and then it becomes frighteningly clear to you. That switch wasn't for the stairs. It was for the main lantern, a lantern that is now beginning to power up. <gasps> the faintest smell of burning begins to reach up to your nose. Oopsie, it looks like maybe that switch wasn't for the stairs lights at all. Don't look directly into the light. Open your eyes and look only at me, and I'll keep you safe. Alright. Perfect. Oh, perfect. 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 Are you okay? You seem okay. I hope I haven't ruined this by pushing you to do something you weren't meant to do. You're so brave. Maybe not so coordinated, but certainly brave. I'm so lucky that you put yourself through this for me. It shows that you're real. Despite your attempts to resist it, the incredible force of energy from the Black Lighthouse's lantern's eye refuses to subside. No, it cannot be ignored, and it doesn't matter if you look directly at it or not. In the end, this was that was just a trivial game. This is real life, and real magic. You stare at it now, and its power penetrates your mind. <gasps> Yo, where are we? You wake to hear a spirit's muffled voice. You got a terrible taste in your mouth, like burnt hair. The air feels damp and smells like ash. It takes time for a second to clear up, but eventually Spirit's words start to make sense to you. However, it's clear she's talking to someone else, not to you. 
You know how sometimes people say, it's not you, it's me? Well, this time, it is you, and it's also me. I can't believe I thought you would change for me. I can't believe I thought what you were doing was a sacrifice. He never gave anything up for me. Well, today, I saw what love looks like, and it looks like a whole... It looks a whole lot different than it, this. What? I don't think you're hearing me, which is weird, because I'm practically shouting. Nobody breaks up with Trapper. Nobody. Oh, yeah? Fine. Nobody breaks up with Trapper, but... Yo. Spirit and Trapper were dating? What? Oh, yeah? Fine. Nobody breaks up with Trapper, but I'm not doing that. I'm dumping... Don't you say it! I'm dumping Evan McMillan, and there's nothing... Wait. I'm dumping Evan McMillan, and there's nothing you or he can do about it. It's over between us, Evan. Rin. I... Trapper turns from Spear and looks directly at you. You realize that you're laying on the ground of some weird tunnel. I think that your shouting woke up Evie. My shouting? Bro. Bro, Trapper and Spirit are dating. Well, Spirit's dumping him. But what the fuck? Fake snore? I don't think she's gonna like me faking. I'm sorry, I think I interrupted something very personal and also quite scary. I swear I wasn't trying to listen in, but I heard a lot. Probably not everything. I think I woke up in the middle. What did you hear? Just you jump dumping Trapper? We were never together. I mean, we were together. Wink, wink, wink. The jig is, as they say, up. They know you're awake now, and you're gonna have to deal with this awkward situation head on. Clearly, I shouldn't be here. You two are having a very personal conversation that I don't need to be involved in. I don't even know how I got here. Not here on this island or here in this creepy tunnel. As far as this island goes, your guess is as good as mine. As far as this tunnel goes, we brought you here. We? You and Trapper? But after the lighthouse light came on, you blacked out. On your way down, I thought you might have hit your head or something. It's hard to tell when blood is new or old around here. Either way, I wanted to get you someplace safe, and so I asked Trapper for help. We brought you down here because we're the only ones who know about this place. It's part of an old tunnel network that connects different places on the islands. Right? Stop popping up everywhere! <laughs> You're so annoying in this run! Fuck! What's up, guys? Talking Island Mysteries, my favorite topic. I, I was just in the neighborhood, so I thought I'd pop in. Trapper, you said this place was private. Don't look at me. I didn't tell him about it. Half of the appeal of this spot is getting away from people like him. Well, geez, I can see when I'm not wanted. You think three's a throuple? You th so you three a throuple now, or because I gotta say I really didn't get the whole trap of trapper spirit thing. But hey, if it's not my business, I don't stick my nose. In. We were not a thing. Nobody traps the trapper, not with traps or with relationships. And you do realize you're sticking your nose in our business right now, right? Wow, so hostile. If you don't want to talk about it, just say so. Anyhow, this tunnel has some very interesting features. If you head about 50 meters down that way, you'll find- GET OUT! Wraith looks around, just to be doubly sure that Trapper is addressing him. I was just leaving. I- <laughs> I don't know what's going on, man. He knew! He knew! Dude, he just pops up everywhere. He wasn't this annoying in the last run, I swear. This island is a lonely place, which is great for me. I love to be alone. Trapper, on the other hand, he's quite needy. And after a lot of pursuit, I finally let him catch up to me. And it became, well, I don't want to call it a relationship. Because somebody really didn't want to have that talk. But we were more than friends. I dispute the events as told for the record. I don't pursue, I stalk, and I lie in wait. Seeing eye to eye was not one of the things we were good at. If you know anything about me by now, it's that I'm on a quest. For revenge. Exactly. 
what you might know about Trapper is like a great classical maestro. Uh, what, what you might not know, Trapper is like a great classical maestro of revenge. Trapper blushes behind the mask. That's one way to compliment a killer. Revenge against friends who had turned their back and betrayed him. Revenge against his father for making him into a monster. Revenge against the barista who wrote Ewen on his cappuccino, knowing his name was actually Evan. For someone who thinks about revenge as much as I do, Trapper is an inspiration. And then you came along, Effie. You showed me that it's okay to be lost, to feel pathetic, to push on when you have nothing real to offer anyone. You showed me that life after death can be more than just an obsession with revenge and mind-blowing sex on the ground in the dark cave or a dusty old tunnel. So, uh, so we know, you know, we all know. Trapper nudges you in the ribs with his elbow. Gross. Clearly, appealing to Trapper's better features has been a winning strategy for dumping his ass because he seems to be taking it quite well. This dude got dumped by Spirit. We got him off of our dating show. This whole half-ass dating show parody thing. At first, I obviously thought it was a lame idea. What kind of moron thought there was an audience for this? But then we spent some time together and I realized there's something actually real here. And I don't want to give up on it. I don't want to give up on us. Listen, Effie, while you were knocked unconscious by some minor head trauma like a total weakling, Spirit confided in me that she has real feelings for you. I took it extremely well, naturally, because I trust her and value her opinions. This storyline is blowing my mind. That doesn't mean I trust you. If you want to get to her, you have to get through me first. By passing Trapper's Test trademark, coming to Behavior TV Sundays at 8 p.m. Welcome to Trapper's Test. Answer my questions correctly or die by my blade. Question one. What's Spirit's real name? The one given to her by her murderous father, which she only lets her real friends call her. It's Rin. I already know this. Hell yeah, you got that one. Don't celebrate yet. Question two. What lives inside Spirit? A dragon. Sure, everyone knows that. They won't all be this easy. Question three. Where did Spirit work back when she was a normal college girl before she was hell-bent on revenge? A restaurant. I know, to think I would date a waitress. Don't tell my father I ever mingled with the help like that. He'd be so disappointed in me. Question four. What's Spirit's favorite color? It's not really a color, though. Okay. All these questions, largely superficial. Sure, maybe I didn't get to know Spirit that well. Maybe that's why she dumped... Maybe that's why it didn't work out for us. Who knows? Question five, the final question. You got this, Effie. According to Spirit, what's worse than being dead? Oh, shit. Ah. Uh, is it not being seen for who you are or having unfinished business? Oh, sh shit. Okay, hear me out. Revenge. Revenge. Revenge is her main driving force. I think I'm gonna go with having unfinished business. Here goes nothing. Fuck! No! Oh. A few moments later. Not being seen for who you are. When I pitched Trapper's test to the suit set, Behavior TV, they told me there was no room in the budget for a new card given as the final prize for winning. So I killed them all, right there on the spot. While killing them didn't solve any of the budget problems, it for sure did feel good. Let's go! We got through Trapper. That means we can have Spirit's heart. I'm telling you this. A, to brag, and B, to explain why the only thing you're gonna win is me saying congratulations for passing Trapper's test. Not that it was some huge challenge. I mean, the woman obsessed with the giant light that shines in the dark has a chip on her shoulder about being seen. Go figure. All right, yeah, okay, I missed that one. All right. You probably guessed, but rules are rules, even if I literally just made them up. You got it, right? 
so I guess I approve of you dating Spirit or whatever. I never really cared in the first place. I was just hoping you'd slip up and give me a good excuse to wet my blade with your blood. Maybe I'll find a reason tomorrow. But for now, you two have fun. Queen, queen, queen. Trapper out. I'm sorry you had to endure that. What, five measly questions? It was nothing. Not even that. As ridiculous and unnecessary as it was, the whole thing. The waking up in a random tunnel, the overhearing our argument, the news that Trapper and I had something going on, and the stupid quiz. All of it. Especially the whole Trapper out catchphrase. It's only because I actually like you. None of it would have happened if I didn't. And I, I like you too, spirit. Please. Ah! Call me Rin. Bro. Okay, Rin. Rin. I didn't really feel like our lighthouse experience was completed. There was something else I wanted to show you. Alone in the lantern room of the tower. We're on a first name, please. Get your mind out of the gutter, Effie. It's not that kind of game. What's that? Hold on a moment. I'm being told... No, wait. It is that kind of game. Disregard the gutter comment. Come back up there with me. There's no place I'd rather be, truly. <laughs> You're excited to return to the lantern room of this lighthouse, despite all of the drama and worry that, has previous... that was previously a part of this place for you. More importantly, you're excited to be there with Spirit. I really am. Oh my god. Which makes it all the more crushing. When you're interrupted by the arrival of Claudette and Dwight. Bruh. Timing. Claudette, Dwight, funny seeing you here. Wait, did I say funny? I meant tragic. Tragic? I don't think so. What could be tragic about a family reunion? Those are always joyous occasions in my experience. Before they can explain what that's even supposed to mean, the lighthouse begins to howl a low, frightening sound. The lens begins to glow in a, in a now familiar way. You prepare to shield your eyes in case something bad happens to you again. Now isn't the time for any reality show adjacent shenanigans. Dwight, Claudette, shield your eyes. We don't know what the lighthouse will... <laughs> now, now, please don't interrupt. You'd think after all this time, you know that we've got your best interest in mind. Wait, what? No, of course I don't think that. I got wax in your ears, friend. I asked you not to interrupt. Too late, the black light flares in the darkness. You see something horrible and strange. In the place of Claudette and Dwight are two ghoulish silhouettes. What? But before you can focus on them, the light passes and the two survivors are returned to their normal state. Yo, we're getting so much lore on this run. It's breezy up here. I should have packed a sweater. What in the hairy hell? Hey, watch your language. You shouldn't speak that way. Onicha? What? What the fuck? Around your house? What the fuck? Bro. Grandpa. <laughs> What? Okay. What? What? Okay, so instead of Oni-chan, it's Oji-chan. That's Grandpa, right? There's a lot to unpack here. They're undead. Which I guess we figured. Oni is... Oh my god. This is so crazy. This storyline is so good. My little Rin, you're such a woman now. They grow up so fast. Uh, what? Evie, uh, me, Grandpa, cousin Yamaoka. Well, technically, not just Grandpa. Technically, he's my great, 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 great Grandpa. But that's a lot of greats to say in a row. I haven't seen my little Rin since I watched over her from the afterlife when she was just a little girl. And I expect you all to say the greats. It's a matter of honor and respect. Except for Rin. She can do whatever she wants. My precious little angel. But you... Oni stares at you with his demonic red eyes. You're pretty sure even the decorative third eye on his mask is looking at you. Oh, what is happening? I'm not sure what a present like you was doing so close to a descendant of the noble Yamaoka bloodline in the first place. Dirk. Claudine, explain what's going on to me. 
it's it's Dwight, sir, and Claudette. Remember, we explained to you that you were going to come meet with your great 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 granddaughter suitor and to give her withhold your approval. Five greats! Great 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 grandfather, sir, your honor master, sir. Wait, is a samurai not a judge? Grandpa, they must have summoned you here because they think you have great judgment, and because if they summoned my father, I would be too distracted by torturing him for all of eternity to continue with the rest of the... Whatever this is, show, game, experience? Ah, uh, yes, that makes sense. Only a man of my own power and magnitude can help. Self-important much? Nice to meet you, Kazan. Kazan? Only my friends and family call me Kazan. Those who tremble in fear at my presence call me Oni. You're seeing a serious resemblance to Trapper, and not only the sheer size of the man that Oni is, but also his attitude. Apparent, apparently spirit as a type. You sure you can or want to measure up to that, bro? There's so much to process here. Spirit dating Trapper was because he's like her great, 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 great grandfather? Wild. Since I realize now the true purpose of my visit is to extinguish your light. Oni waves his katana in the air at you menacingly, like great, 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 great grandfather, like great, 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 great granddaughter, apparently. Hold up there, grandpops. Not so fast. You're only supposed to kill them if they deserve it. First, you should get to know them a little better. Young people these days, always waiting to kill people, insisting they must deserve it. Back in my day, you did what needed to be done because your nobility depended on it. In, in this day, for such an imposing presence, he sure is giving off serious old man yells at cloud vibes. This is so good. So, 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 so good. You see, when I was a young man, we didn't have foreigners in our land. Didn't need them. We had an abundance of culture already. A little too much, if you ask me. But I didn't make the rules. The rulers did exactly how it should be. Oh, wait. I get it. Sweet Rin, my beautiful descendant. You've invited me here to do what you're too kind to do. Bash this jerk's head in. Claude, Doris, I fetch my elbow. Rin, wrap your robe around this mongrel's hands and hold them still. We'll splatter their brains on the bench together as a family. Grandpa, no. That's not why I invited you here at all. In fact, I didn't invite you. Claudette and Dwight did. Oh, haha. <laughs> yes, sure. Wink, wink, wink. This whole saying wink out loud thing is getting out of hand. Him and Trapper really do have a lot in common, don't you say? I swear, Evie has a good soul and a heart of a warrior. They fought for my love in their own way, faced down death more than once, and put up with their fair share of nonsense. Nonsense, which seems to be endless. Can we, I don't know, wrap this up already? Of course, of course, who am I to expect anyone to wait around for my approval? I've only been hanging out as a ghost and watching my bloodline be polluted by cowards and quitters for five generations. Just come give your ancestor-in-law a hug. Sword drawn, Oni beckons you closer. There's no way he has ever hugged anyone in his entire life. I think I'm good over here, actually. Right now, push them my way and I'll split them in half. The sacrifice of this un- The super to the Yamaoka bloodline will surely bring us back to life and set us back in the course of honor. You're so silly, Grandpa. We both know only one sacrifice can get our family back on track. Revenge on my father, your great, 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 great grandson, traitor to the Yamanoka, Yamanoka line. The lust for violence in your voice, it fills me with cheer. I'll never forget who I am. I suppose if this is the person you want to be with, to go on your journey of bloody vengeance with, I should trust your judgment. The strength inside of you blooms from the same cherry tree that was planted centuries ago by our shared ancestors. Ooh! That's where the cherry tree comes in. And if Evie... I just fucked up my own name. And if Evie ever treats me poorly, you have my word. On our family's honor, I will wield my katana and gut them like a fish. A tear rolls down from behind Oni's demonic mask. Oh, he's so proud. Be well, Rin. I will see you again soon. 
Now let's go, servants. Clint, Dennis, return me to the stables. I assume my dragon has been fed and tended to? Um, yes, sure. I swear this is still better than dealing with the trapper's dad. I'm s oh, sorry, that's me. I'm sorry if I was disrespectful of your great-great-great-great-great-grandfather. He seemed like a very special man. I realize I will never measure up to someone like that. A warrior with a hell of a fashion sense. In that mask. Whew. Don't worry, I would never expect you to. Or want you to, really. If all I wanted was the biggest brute alive, I'd be down in Trapper's Cave right now, avoiding his vintage bear traps. But that's not the life I've imagined for myself. The sense of abstract duty, anger, anger at a world changing around me, a lust for blood, that's no way to live. And yet, as you now know, that is the Yamoka way of life. Forever, I'm cursed to battle against the dragon that lives inside me. Or at least, maybe I was, until now. Oh my god, call me the dragon tamer, baby. You haven't won this game yet, please don't ruin it. Sorry, I have no idea where that came from. I think we spent enough time in this lantern room. We should get back to the beach. I think I'm doing good. The moonlight sets a romantic mood as storm clouds roll in and surround the black lighthouse. You know, the sun might have set, but if we wait long enough, it will rise again. Guys. We did it. Nosebleed moment, like... <laughs> We got our queen. Spirit removes her sheer robe, showing you her strappy black bikini. Her pale skin glows under the light of the moon. Maybe you could help me get a head start on applying tomorrow's sunscreen? Again? I mean, yeah, of course. Last time was... Well, I definitely felt more connected to you afterwards. To be totally real with you... I kind of just asked you as a goof, but I really enjoyed it. I swear though, if you tell anyone about this, I will not be labeled a foot freak. Not that there is anything wrong with feet, it's just that something about that kind of attention really gets people talking. She's not wrong. Steady, steady. Okay, 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 okay. Yes! Okay, almost. I'm sweating. Yes! Oh no, close. Almost. Almost. Yes! God, that, that's so goddamn hot. I love feeling your hands sliding up and down my feet and between my toes. My skin has never been more moist. This pains me to say. Pains me. I love spirit, but this hurts me. Get up here right now. Oh my god. Guys, look at this. She got a little heart in her eyes. Before you can find a towel to wipe off your lotioned hands, Spear grabs you and pulls you in close. Her lips lock onto yours. They're surprisingly soft and warm. The sensation is... incredible. <laughs> Clouds cover the moon and you find yourself on the beach with Spirit in complete darkness. You can feel the narrow straps of her bathing suit come undone and come to life. Shit! Snaking through the air, wrapping around your body, lifting you up off your feet. Come here, you. So this is what it feels like to fly. <laughs> Sheesh! As spirit pulls you close, you feel bits of glass press into your flesh. Pain and pleasure mix and wash over you like the ocean. Salty air stinging your skin as you writhe against your undead lover. The lighthouse howls. <laughs> In the darkness, <laughs> I can't hear not to like. <laughs> In the darkness, you're pretty sure that spirit lets the dragon inside of her take over. Shit, guys, shit. Well, this is something, right? Woo. 
If it kills you, you're sure it will have been worth it. Damn! The clouds part just as you manage to pull yourself exhausted away from spirit. <laughs> this glass was inside a spirit and now it's inside of us, guys. <laughs> A chunk of broken glass is lodged in your shoulder. When you pluck it from your skin, it drips blood. Sorry, I think this got stuck to me when we were... When I was... When... You know, I was having the best night of my life. Spirit drags her fingertip over the sharp end of the glass shard. Woo! Fuck! <laughs> Dude, she's so great! Keep it. Consider it a memento. I will treasure it forever, queen. It will go in my shrine of spirit. I've got plenty more where that came from. <laughs> you arrive at the beach to find Claudette and Dwight waiting for you. Now is the time, Effie, to face your destiny. Actually, about that. Evie, can we talk privately? Maybe, um, not here. Maybe someplace else would be better for this talk. You know how we feel about schedule spirit? Very strongly. And you know how I feel about you telling me what to do. Don't do it. Like I said, I'd rather have this talk with Effie privately. It's not right to do it here in front of everyone. You know, from my experience in upper management at my father's mine, I learned that if you're gonna fire someone, it's best to do it in public so they don't freak out. Please, enough of the fire talk. Oh wait, you think? No, she couldn't be. They seem so in love. Well, I mean, not really. Spirit is still spirit. Did I just get played? But if I tried to imagine spirit in love, I suppose she hasn't attempted to murder Effie yet, so... Okay, fine. Your guess is as good as mine, really. The girl is very hard to read. A word of advice, though. If you're going to end it, end it quickly. In my experience, the more pathetic the creature, the more annoying the final howls are. Spirit, but we're on a first name basis. The glass was in you and then it was in me, like... Mm. I don't need any advice. Everyone out, except for Effie. Alone with Spirit, you feel something awful hanging in the air. More awful even than the lingering smell of the cleaver body spray. Ugh, that gag. I'm gagging. We're all gagging for cleaver boy spray. Spirit, Rin, I... I don't know what you plan on saying, but before you say anything, just know that I really, really enjoyed my time with you. Getting to know you over the past few days helped me to get to know myself. For that, I just wanted to say thank you. That's sweet. You're welcome. And you know what? It's that kind of thing that shows me you've got a good heart inside of you. Too good for me to carve out and toss into the ocean. But also too good for me to love. Did I play it wrong? This is so upsetting. I, I thought we did it right. I thought... I'm so sad. I need someone who shares my interests. Someone I can connect with. Someone jaded and dispassionate. Only driven forward by a desire for revenge. I need someone who isn't so warm that I feel cold in comparison. I need someone who isn't you. Can we just be friends? Bruh. After all this work and time, she thought she made us think that we were good. I don't know if... Before you finish that, just know if we're not friends, we'll probably become enemies and I will destroy you. Friends it is! I'm glad to have you here for me when I need you, but also not too close to me when I don't. So, yeah, I'll see you around. Spirit starts to leave. Wait, what? 
That's it? That's how this ends? You're just leaving me here? I'm not sure I'd use the word ends, and for that matter, I wouldn't say that I'm leaving, but us, we're definitely through. The fact that you can't see that, well, it just proves that we never really belong together anyhow. Good night, Effie. What the hell? I just spent all this time on this island doing everything I can I can to get to know you, only to be told that I should leave the chocolate factory through the side door. Bro, accurate. I don't know what that means. Anyway, I said goodnight, Effie. See you around. Jeez, I'm sorry. What a bummer. Hey, why did she keep saying she'll see me around? Gosh, I have no idea. That's so cute! They're all cheesy! I got the achievement friends forever. And so my precious killers lived happily ever after. As they should. Learning to love themselves first and foremost. This is so cute. Oh my god. Bro, I didn't know how much I needed little chibi killers in my life. Holy shit. Oh god. Whilst trapped in a never-ending cycle of torture of my design. Wait, did I just spoil my true identity? You made it this far. You should probably know that. Then you'll have to play again to find out more. Goodbye, Effie. See you again later. And again. And again. And again. Forever. This, I'm not gonna lie, this playthrough, I think I enjoyed this a lot more than the Wraith one. Uh, it was good. The Wraith one was good. Don't get me wrong. But the elements that were thrown into here, like Oni showing up and like, the things got seen. And it, I mean, I can't. I can't not love spirit, you know, like, whew, uh, there were highs, there were lows, you know, we had a magical night with spirit and then she gave us a piece of glass that she stabbed into our back and tore out our hearts. But I guess I'd rather have her in, have her in our life as a friend than as nothing at all. And what the fuck? Can we just talk about the fact that Spirit and Wraith were dating? Like, what? They were a couple? And then, again, Oni showing up, and then Claude and Dwight being undead. I feel like the more we play this, the more, like, lore we're unlocking, and I, I, I love it. Well done, behavior. I fucking love this. I can't wait to play it more. I gotta find out if there's multiple Spirit eggs. Like, I gotta know. Damn. So hopefully next time I play this, I think I'm a little bit heartbroken from Spirit. I know that there's Trapper and Huntress, and I should definitely do those runs too. But I high key want to see if I can get a trickster ending. I'm so glad that we. Like, I don't even have the right words. That was such a roller coaster of emotions and surprises. I'm so glad that we did another playthrough. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and watching this. I hope you all enjoyed the playthrough. And I hope you all have a lovely night or afternoon or morning, whatever time it is for you. Thank you guys again for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.